<laughs> hey Francis, how you doing? Okay, just I think I'm done. Uh, there's someplace else I could share on Facebook, but I'm I'm already exhausted. Okay, guys, hi. Um, before I go on any further, just a shout out to Lenovo Australia for the laptop I use for my live streaming. I'm using a uh, uh, Lenovo IdeaPad Y700, which is a gaming laptop, right? If you don't know anything about live streaming and you're thinking of getting into it yourself, I stream from uh, my computer. I don't stream from my mobile phone, not usually, <laughs> not if I can help it. Um, and for as far as the type of computer you need, you need something that's fairly robust, okay? Because there's a lot of, uh, there's a fairly processor intensive uh, uh, exercise to live stream there. So um, what I'm doing is I'm going to be cooking duck because I found this at Aldi on the way home from dropping Noah off from uh, at childcare a couple of hours ago. And this is the duck. And this cost me about $15, okay, which I thought was kind of cheap. I remember a few days ago, I actually saw at Woolworths, they had duck on special. And duck, unfortunately, is quite big and heavy by its very nature, all right? It's not like you can buy a little chicken. And I, and I had Noah with me and already had a lot of groceries. And I live on the top floor of, a, uh, <laughs> of this apartment block and it's hard work trying to juggle everything. So I left it there. This time I didn't go to Woolworths. I went to Aldi. 15 bucks I figured was uh, pretty cheap as well, so I picked it up. So there you go, I've defrosted this under uh, basically regular tap water for uh, since I came home, a couple of hours. It's still slightly um, frozen actually. We're going to try and do what we can with it, okay? I'm not doing a uh, peeking duck if you're wondering, so <laughs> not that exotic. Just let me turn on the other light, hang on. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to make, and uh, this is something I grew up eating. I'm going to actually make a couple of different things with this. Um, this is something I grew up eating, and it's not too, uh, too uh, dissimilar to the Teochew braised duck. And I don't know if the version I'm doing now is a Hakka version, or it's just my mom's, my stepmom's home style version. But usually if you do the Teochew braised duck, you want the whole duck and you braise it for hours and hours you gotta like stuff the cavity with like uh, uh you know you gotta all kinds of stuff anyway it just seems i'm gonna do a shortcut version today but also like i said i'm, I'm not going to use the whole duck for this particular dish because it's just me and baby noah in this house and i think we'll get sick of eating the same dish um pretty quickly so what i'm going to do first of all i'm not a huge fan of uh eating like chicken or duck skin unless it's like deep fried okay so i'm actually going to get rid of the skin to start with so i'm going to use a pair of scissors this is not poultry scissors it's just good old like <laughs> household scissors i'm going to try and peel off the skin because if you notice like this that is 2.2 kilos by the way which would work out to be over five pounds okay so it's quite a large bird uh hey may how you doing <laughs> um so this is quite big and bulky and so I'm going to try and tear off at least some of the skin, all right? Because I every time I eat duck, the only time I like duck skin is when it's in a roast duck or a uh, picking duck, okay? And I, I still scrape off all the fat. Basically, I, 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 if, if I were to eat chicken or duck skin, it has to be like completely devoid of fat. In other words, when it's been fried or roasted to a crisp. Uh, I'm just going to re refresh my, <laughs> my Twitch screen here. Uh, here we go. Okay, so first of all, there's still a little bit of water at the bottom of this thing here actually, so it might be a little bit tricky. So first of all, I'm going to try and remove the skin, and second of all, I'm going to actually segment this, okay? I'm not using the whole thing for the Teochew duck dish, or I won't call it Teochew duck from here on in, because I'm sure the Teochews are going to get really upset uh, at my bastardizing their dish, <laughs> okay? Um, this, is, but this is something that I grew up eating as a kid. It's kind of like one of these comfort, like uh, home style cooking type, dishes okay so it's going to be braised in a thick dark sauce and i hope i've got enough of it so this is a sauce you hear you hear me talk okay i've moved my camera you've heard me talk about this sauce a number of times but uh we're going to get back into it uh uh in a little bit i'll explain how how you use it and what it is and whatever so first of all i'm going to cut off the skin and second of all i'm going to segment it and third of all i'm actually going to be using some of it to make a duck soup all right and again i don't know what 
dialect group. <laughs> okay. But you know, you grow up in Malaysia as a Chinese, you're not just a Chinese, you're a Chinese of a particular um, dialect uh, group. Okay, I'm Hakka. But there's a lot of like cross pollination in terms of what we end up cooking at home. So this duck soup is again something that we grew up quite familiar with. And unfortunately, I don't have any tomatoes. You saw in my last broadcast, I opened a can of diced tomatoes, but I've frozen the whole what's left of it. So I don't want to defrost a big like lump of a um, diced tomato, which is not ideal anyway. But you really want fresh corded tomatoes, which I might pick up on the way to picking up no uh, home later on and then. Um, adding to it but uh, one distinctive feature of that soup also is that it's going to have the salted vegetables okay you should be able to find this quite easily at your local Asian grocery store um, these are uh, it's labeled here as pickled mustard okay so it's going to be kind of like a salty uh, duck soup or something like that okay so uh, I might if I can if I'm successful at like segmenting, segmenting this I'm going to try and uh, get some of the bone into the soup because the bone is where you get the soup stock flavor from and the other thing is if you know about my broadcast you know uh, I always have a lot of chicken stock concentrate by virtue of running my business so I'm going to uh, basically boost the soup stock with some of the chicken concentrate all right so here we go let me see I'm just cutting it open if you've cooked duck before let me know in your comments I'm not even sure if I've actually made this myself right I grew up eating it so I'm very familiar with it but usually uh, duck is not that commonly available and also it's not that cheap usually um, so uh, it's not something that I instinctively think oh we're gonna have duck for dinner tonight and I'll go and buy some all right so here you go you see this um, the skin here is coming off quite easily <laughs> Uh, and duck meat tends to be quite uh, a little bit tougher as well so I might in fact try and the, the, the braising part you're supposed to usually meant to braise it for over an hour okay you're gently stirring it and stuff like that I might try and cheat and throw it in my pressure cooker okay and then see how I go with that so close this off hey Scott how you doing here we go Hey Scott, and uh, why are you so blurry from Vans? Am I blurry? Am I dropping frames? I'm not dropping any frames. Maybe the blurriness is at your end. I don't know. Uh, here we go. Okay. Maybe you can change the resolution. You're watching on YouTube and it looks blurry. Maybe you can change the resolution. But usually YouTube um, uh, sets the resolution based on your internet speed okay okay so you see the amount of fat here okay so what I'm going to do with the skin actually I'm still thinking through this a little bit but there's a lot of fat in duck skin all right and one thing I can do is actually just to uh, render it and make duck fat out of it right and then save it for other types of dishes uh, another time now if you're Chinese and you grew up in Malaysia like I did uh, around the whole hawker food scene okay uh, usually uh, back in my day anyway I think they may have kind of like moved away from that a little bit nowadays back in my day um, a lot of the hawkers in terms of the kind of fat they use in their stir fries and whatever they use pork lard a lot okay because it was cheap and supposedly it, uh, it adds a lot of flavor I don't eat pork so I <laughs> have never subscribed to the whole pork fat thing but uh, essentially uh, you know I kind of figured that duck fat would kind of produce a similar effects because sometimes when I do stir fries uh, that you know Malaysians are really passionate about our fruit uh, our food okay so you'll find people will claim that or oh, you know a particular dish is not authentic unless it's cooked with pork fat and all that sort of stuff so if you're like me and you don't eat pork fat you know you kind of like and, and then you sell food you open yourself up to claims that your food is inauthentic because you don't use pork fat right so I'm going to I might actually render this into fat and then use it for my <laughs> my stir fried noodle dishes another time all right I'm not getting any comments on uh, Twitch at the moment which tells me either my chat is not working or it tells me that nobody is commenting on Twitch although I can see that there are people watching okay so if you're watching on Twitch please say hello 
so that I know that my chat is working. Okay. I'm just cutting this away. Uh, Jackie McPherson, is there any way I can get your curry sauces, please? They are the best. Yeah, the curry paste, Jackie, you can still order them at my uh, website. You've done that before, right? Um, I don't usually bring them to the markets because I only go to the one market nowadays, which is Thursdays at Concord Hospital, where I only sell this chakwe deer. But yeah, Jackie, you can you can order them at my website, which is jackiem.com.au under the shop link. Otherwise, just pop me an email and I can sort you out from there. Um, but yeah, I don't bring my curry paste to the markets as a matter of course, because I'm so focused on just feeding the lunchtime crowd and also the lunchtime crowd, because that's all I do. I just feed the, the Hong Kong hospitals, uh, pr primarily the hospital staff, even though the market is actually technically open to the general public. Um, they, they just want to run down and grab their lunch. They're not in the mood to shop for uh, what they're going to they're not in the mood to shop for curry pastes, <laughs> right? So uh, the odd occasion where I've brought them along, they've been a bit of a waste of time. And also uh, I need to keep them cold and all that sort of stuff. So it's a little bit cumbersome. Okay, I prefer to just sell them online. Um, and then I ship them out to you anywhere around Australia. Uh, so just uh, hit me up or anywhere or best place to check them out is at jackiem.com.au okay hi Bernard how you doing okay so it's my first it doesn't look like a lot <laughs> um, so I keep cutting chipping away at this okay if you've got any questions hit me up and let me go to twitch dashboard here we go this okay this is the uh, what they call the Parsons nose also known as the butt basically let's cut this off because that's where there's going to be a lot of fat okay so I'm going to throw that aside the other thing I've got to point out as well someone actually posted a uh, link to a recipe on discord uh, a while back and I only <laughs> I've been sick for a few weeks from the uh, flu and I only just saw the uh, link over the weekend but essentially let me just move this up okay but essentially um, they posted a recipe for seafood right that used um, I think from memory either five spice powder or it used um, ingredients that go into five spice powder primarily star anise okay uh, and it was a from another website, a recipe website, um, and I'm always very cynical about like uh, <laughs> recipe. I, 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 I tend to be a very cynical person by nature, anyway. But if it's a, a recipe, uh, like a generic recipe website, like you know, whatever, you know, one of those big glitzy ones, international ones, um, I don't generally hold a lot of faith in. The recipes there okay because i like to go back to the source to people who actually uh you know from that ethnicity you know like say maybe a you know i prefer to say for instance uh, follow a blog by a malaysian living in malaysia than a blog that's uh you know part of a major newspaper like where anybody can submit recipes okay so that recipe called for star anise or five spice powder in a seafood dish and to me, that's very unusual, okay? Generally, if you're Asian like me, uh, and I'm not speaking for all Asians, if you're an Asian like me, uh, five spice powder, which we are going to use for this stuff, is generally used for strong flavored meats, okay? We use it to essentially kind of like, a, um, in this particular instance, to mask the strong flavor of the duck, okay? We don't usually use it in something really subtle like a, a seafood stir fry. But that's just my thought on it. I could be completely wrong. So that's from my own experience growing up as uh, an agent and as a professional cook. <laughs> okay. Here we go. It's a lot of fat, guys. So uh, like I said, I'm trying to uh, cut out as much of it as possible because I hate biting into chunks of fat when I'm eating. 
duck in particular, right? So we've taken off like the entire breast section over here. And then I've got some wrapped around over here. I'm gonna snip off. I'm gonna I'm not gonna worry about the wings. Okay. But that will actually cut down on the uh, amount of uh, oil in your dish ultimately, okay? And the other thing about ducks in Australia as well, you usually buy them. I, I don't think I've ever seen ducks sold fresh. They're always frozen. And because they're so big and they're frozen, they're a little bit cumbersome to defrost, okay? You want to eat them straight away. So I had to have this under cold running water for a couple of hours. Just like a slow drip, by the way. You don't have to have like a big like gush of water. Okay. Cutting it. Okay. And someone asked me on my Facebook page the other day whether I post whether I've got my kaffir lime curry paste recipe, kaffir lime curry recipe, on my website, and I meant to reply. I didn't and of course I can't find a notification anymore because you know it's just buried in among everything else on Facebook but uh, I don't actually know you just have to go to if you're wondering if a particular recipe is on my website just go to jackiem.com.au and there's actually a search bar there you can just do a search for that recipe all right if it's not there it's probably because I just thought it was just too much work but kaffir lime curry is something that um, is one of the favorites uh, among my Australian customers, all right, it's uh, it's not something I personally eat. <laughs> in all honesty, <laughs> uh, it was a recipe I adapted, you know, for my uh, frozen curry range when I used to make a range of frozen meals, and I, I've always hated it, but it turned out to be a huge hit. It's actually my top selling, uh, you know, curry, along with the my beef rendang back in the day, all right. But uh, subsequently, when I stopped making frozen meals, I retain, uh, um, I, I continued to produce the curry paste range, which uh, Jackie was asking about. Um, and so I do sell kaffir lime curry paste, okay? And I think that might be what that person was asking for. But yeah, uh, I don't remember if I've posted it there. I, I have done a broadcast where I actually made it live on air. But uh, the recipe is very involved. <laughs> it's not involved in the sense of like, uh, uh, in the sense that it's hard to make. It's involved in the sense that there are a lot of ingredients that go into it. Okay, so, but if you, if you want any of my recipes, um, any of the food you've eaten of mine, nothing is secret, okay? I'm one of those people who subscribe to uh, kind of like open source knowledge <laughs> as far as my recipes are concerned, okay? We are getting there, guys. So you know, let's see this. Like I said, I've moved my camera angle a little bit because someone was complaining about uh, during one of my broadcasts that the camera angles were crappy. But uh, you do what you can. Okay. So I've moved it a little bit higher, but it's still not ideal, I suppose. <laughs> It's coming out pretty good. Now I'm just trying to figure out, you know, usually if, I, if my mom was cooking this at home, my stepmom uh, was cooking this at home, she'd be coming out with the, ch uh, the Chinese chopper and like chopping these into chunks, okay? Uh, I don't, uh, this is actually, by the way, in case you're wondering, a lot of people think this is my kitchen and say, oh, lovely, my kitchen looks, this is actually my living room. <laughs> so I'm not particularly inclined to actually, uh, uh, you know, get splatters of uh, raw poultry <laughs> around my, my 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 living room okay even though my living room doesn't have any creature comforts in it and basically just like this table and like got my cooking appliances up the back okay <laughs> nonetheless you know So with the duck, like I said, uh, the skin, I think we're going to render. Hey, this one, mommy. Hey, Edge and I, how you doing? 
Let me just dismiss that. Okay, so hello boys, how you doing? Not working? Now it's working, all right, now it's just coming through. Sorry about that, so hello boys. Yeah, so suddenly uh, I'm seeing all these chats show up. <sighs> Damn Twitch. <laughs> hey, this one, mommy, I saw you, the pictures you posted on my Discord server. Sorry, I didn't notice them before. Uh, for whatever reason, Discord didn't show me the notifications for the food channel posts, so uh, I missed them. Plus, I noticed based on the timestamp that they were posted about the time when I was like, <laughs> not on my deathbed, but just <laughs> feeling really miserable with the flu, so I probably missed that for that reason as well. But yeah, the blue flower powder uh, Savior looks really interesting. I might, I've been meaning to actually have a go at that too, but uh, just haven't gotten around to it. And Sago putting with blue flower powder. So if you guys are wondering what I'm talking about with the blue flower powder, um, that was a giveaway uh, that was on offer a few weeks ago to my live video audience, but only if you follow me on Twitch. So if you're watching this anywhere else apart from Twitch, um, thanks for watching and make sure you say hello, but, uh, primarily, uh, well, not primarily, <laughs> well, actually primarily. Okay. Fair enough. Cause I might change this in the future. Uh, if you want to be in the running for, uh, the multitude of giveaways I have on offer on my channel, you need to hop over to Twitch, twitch.tv and follow me, uh, Jackie M, uh, food. All right. Twitch.tv slash Jackie M food. My husband's been asking me to make it again too. Oh, cool. <laughs> That's the, uh, so the, 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 the blue flower powder, you actually put it in the Sago itself. Is that right? I, I was I trying to make it out from the picture. I wasn't quite sure the, the, it was the Sago that you put the blue flower uh, powder on, uh, in, sorry, here we go. <laughs> The other thing about this uh, duck is that uh, it's tougher all around, okay? The skin, the fibers, everything is tougher. I want to see pictures. Yeah, Edge of Night is uh, the blue flower powder uh, picture, the, 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 the Sago, is posted on my Discord server. If people don't know what I'm talking about, Edge of Night, I think you've been to my Discord server, right? Um, but for those who don't know, you go to bit.ly slash discord jackie d-i-s-c-o-r-d jackie all one word uh and all lowercase okay discord jackie and there's a an open invitation for you to join my server okay discord in case you're wondering like i was until i got onto the whole twitch bandwagon discord is basically like whatsapp but for uh, the twitch community primarily okay here we go we are nearly there guys I just don't like, look at how much fat I've managed to get. <laughs> it's like half the duck is all fat, right? Here you go. I didn't sign up for Discord. Ah, okay, yeah. Go go and sign up because you don't need any special, like, uh, whatever. I think you can just connect it to your Twitch. And, yeah, just bit.ly slash Discord Jackie. And there are some pictures in the... Uh, when you go into Discord, for those who don't know, there's like my Discord server, there'll be like a general chat area, but also on the left hand column, there'll be all these what's called channels, okay? So we've got a uh, food channel where people post pictures or ask questions about food. And someone was asking me questions about, uh, <laughs> I posted a photo of a Serbian dish I had at a restaurant here in Sydney. <laughs> Postcode 2166 is the area that I'm promoting. And they're asking for the recipe. I was like, I only know how to eat Serbian food. It was my first time eating Serbian food. I don't actually know how to cook it. Uh, but it's, uh, basically, it was a slow cooked lamb dish. Okay, so here we go. So, some uh, icicles, as you can see here at the bottom of this dish. You get all the insides. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go. This is a. I'm trying, like I said, I'm trying to uh, not make a mess here. Okay, so excuse me if I look like I'm being a little bit cautious. But that's my skin duck, right? But let me just take off my gloves, and I'm just going to move this here. Bring up my cutting board, and like I said, I'm trying to. I'm trying to figure out. 
if I might just fillet, uh, fillet the meat for the braising and then use the, 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 the frame and uh, some of the rest of the meat for the soup. I think I might do that actually. Okay, more gloves. Okay, if I'm filleting it, I might actually do it in the bowl itself. So, here we go. Okay, so that's the duck breast over here and the leg. Okay, like I said, look, I don't know how long it'll take to braise this, in all honesty, but usually they would suggest that you rub the duck with the five spice powder and whatever and let it sit for like an hour two hours five hours whatever and then when you braise it with all the sauces you're meant to braise it for an hour and a half okay uh i don't know if that's necessary but if it is um the pressure cooker will certainly speed that up okay so this is quite fibrous okay that's the that's from the drumstick where do i go if you just type in let me just type it in here uh dot lee slash discord jackie okay if you just click on that link that will take you to discord okay and it will take you to my invitation all these young people i would have thought you guys would be a bit more technical technical than uh, your average uh, <laughs> your average person uh let me know okay look I'm gonna start piling it into my pressure cooker, okay? So, by the way, this is the Optimum Induction Pressure Cook. Optimum Pressure Cook is a new name for it. For <laughs> well, the longest time, I was calling it the Optimum Induction Pressure Cook Pro, which it was the name that it, uh, that it was branded as when I was uh, first set this unit. And apparently they've rebranded it to just the Optimum Pressure Cook, okay? But so that's the pressure cook, Optimum Pressure Cook and it is uh, one of the, my, my most used um, appliances in this kitchen because it does a whole bunch of stuff apart from pressure cooking you can cook rice it can, you can use it for deep frying um, you can use it for slow cooking you can use it for yogurt making not that i make yogurt <laughs> i don't really eat yogurt um, okay so i'm just cutting out bits of it the bits are actually turning out quite small so they might not in fact even take that long to cook but be sure so i'm sure look it's not going to kill it to be pressure cooked or like you know 20 minutes really in my opinion okay Best I can, I'm trying to avoid having to chop this up, okay, because it can get sloppy. I was going to say this is my sharpest knife, but um, that's uh, it's getting quite dull quite quickly, in all honesty. We've got any knife uh, distributors out there who want to sponsor some of these segments? Come talk to me. You know where to find me. Okay. Okay, look. Let's bring out the cutting board <laughs> with a duck braise. Yes, I am braising some of it, and then the rest of it I'm going to make a soup with. You know, your, what do you call it? Your ham toy um, tong, you know, whatever you call it. <laughs> it's a pam choy tong. <laughs> I don't know. Pam choy tong just means salted veggie soup. Uh, and yeah, I am I, I am going to braise it, all right? I know the Teochew style is that they braise the whole duck and they gently stir it over the wok, uh, over, you know, an open flame for hours, but I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to shortcut it. I'm going to start by pressure cooking it and then I'm going to take it out and then braise the rest of it. Uh, you know just to hopefully help speed it up a bit and also help to kind of like in infuse the uh the duck with the flavor of the sauces as well right 
the great thing about duck is it's all it's all red meat you know but it's also very gamey that's why like uh, the spices like the five spice powder work quite well with this okay i'm not generally a huge like five spice powder fan myself uh, you know a little to me goes a long way with that but yeah if you were to use it um you use it in like gamey uh kinds of uh, cuts of meat okay I don't know if you can hear it. There's, there's a little bit of a crunch to it, but that's because of the uh, fact that it's still slightly frozen up. Okay. The dish that has green mustard. Yeah, the soup. Yeah, the soup with the green mustard and um, tomato usually, but I don't have tomato. I really should start stocking up on tomatoes. <laughs> Two broadcasts in a row where I've root the fact that I don't have tomatoes sitting around. Okay. okay, there's not much meat left apart from this. Let's cut a bit off the thigh here. And you know what? I'm going to actually add some uh, Chinese dried mushrooms to this. I like mushrooms. And I don't know if my mom's version had mushrooms. I can't remember now, but uh, it can't hurt. All right. And I'm gonna pressure cook the the soup too. Actually, I think because I don't want to simmer it for two hours. So I've got two pressure cookers. Okay, there you go. So that's the frame, just bits of meat hanging off of it. Okay, Cherie, Cherie's curry paste size. Okay, cool. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> There you go, that's the carcass. Look at the uh, fat over here, all right? And that's the duck fillets, if you can see it. It's a bit dark, sorry about that, guys. I've never cooked duck before, always felt intimidated. I buy roast duck. I, I buy roast duck as well, because usually roast duck actually is cheaper than like raw duck here in Australia. But this was uh, cheap enough that I thought I'll have a go at it. But I don't know if I've ever actually cooked duck myself, in all honesty. <laughs> Okay, so this is my other pressure cooker. Okay, I'm gonna chuck this in here. Oops, it's too big. <laughs> okay, there you go. And that's the other reason why I actually decided to fillet it as well because I, you know, the whole duck would be too big to go straight into a pressure cooker. So that's that. Let's add some water to this. And some uh, chicken stock concentrate, all right, just because I have a lot of chicken stock concentrate from my business that I need to get rid of. Get rid of. Here we go. This is all like the, the reason why these um, a lot of my stuff are in bags is because they are basically like at the end of the day at my market stall, we have to pack everything up and transport them in my van okay so uh is when they're bagged and secured like that th that's the safest way to transport liquids otherwise they spill in your cooler and then it just makes a big freaking mess okay so that's my stock here i'm just gonna add a couple of ladles to it so this is not chicken stock per se but actually the concentrated chicken juices from um from poaching chicken in the bag okay so they're quite strong flavored if you use too much of it it's just going to taste overpowering right okay so there you go just that i'm just gonna i'm just gonna actually just pressure cook it as is at the moment Let me just clean up this a little bit. Do I have a pressure? I, how, I do have a pressure cooker. How long should I cook it? I don't know. I'm gonna guess. I'm guessing as I go along. Um, but I won't cook it too long. This is the the 
the bones I've only put in for 15 minutes, okay? So uh, we'll see how it turns out after 15 minutes because I want to actually add other stuff to it after that as well. Um, but generally, if you were cooking, like if you're boiling chicken like bones, you would actually... Uh... Hi, Colleen, how you doing? Um, but if you were boiling like uh, chicken bones, generally about an hour, hour and a half is a good like um, amount of time. If you were cooking like beef bones, you would want longer. Right, uh, just let me clean this up a little bit. <sighs> okay, but yeah, these are the mustard, pickled mustard leaves that we're going to throw into the soup. Like I said, along with usually like um, tomatoes, which I don't have, so I'm a bit bummed about that, but it should still taste all right. And the Discord thing looks confusing, I always also <laughs> Oh, edge of night, I would have thought, you know. I would have thought you, you you young people would be a little bit more, uh, you know, <laughs> accepting. <laughs> anyway, I'm just going to wash this and I'll come back in a sec. So not a lot of that left, all right, here you go. But more than enough for no one myself. Your Sega thing looks cool. Bread had like one tiny swirl. I know, <laughs> that was really lame. <laughs> the, the worst part of it with the bread was that like, <coughs> those people wondering what we're talking about. I made like, <coughs> I attempted Hainanese bread with some blue powder. Uh, Huda, how you doing? Thanks for watching. Um, yeah. Uh, I attempted Hainanese uh, bread, which I've made before in the past, but I attempted it last week uh, with the blue flour powder, right? Just to be cute, but Hainanese bread is not meant to be blue, by the way, guys, but I thought it would be fun to just experiment. Okay, so you see, I'm putting this sauce in here, which most people would, if you've been following me long enough, you would know what this is. This is um, variously called dark soya sauce or thick soya sauce but in this particular instance this is called cooking caramel okay we grew up knowing it as dark soya sauce if you speak Chinese yao, right uh, literally like black soya sauce is meant to be this growing up okay um, but over the years you know the names change so if you look at Asian recipe books you know they will still call it uh, dark soya sauce or thick soya sauce okay but like I said for branding pur purposes uh, this is now called cooking caramel for this particular brand anyway okay and this seems to be the only brand that's available here in Australia but that was the brand the same brand that we grew up using in Malaysia anyway so the brand is called Cheong Chan C-H-E-O-N-G-C-H-A-N uh, and you really need to pick it up at your Asian grocery store right if you want to attempt making it okay this People confuse it because in Australia, Australia is close to Indonesia. So in Australia, you can get kicap manis or sweet soya sauce quite easily. All right. So a lot of Westerners confuse this for sweet soya sauce. It's not the same. Um, it's similar. All right. But sweet soya sauce is sweeter um, and also less uh, treacly black. Okay. So you really need to use this. Um, but you can attempt to make your own caramel sauce and I have done it in the past, all right? It's just uh, sugar and fish sauce. Okay, you caramelize the sugar, you add fish sauce, it turns out really black. Um, anyway, you want some light soya sauce in there as well. Okay, this is from Ayam, okay? And if you are, if you are um, from New South Wales, I don't know anyone here from New South Wales. If you're from New South Wales, you will know I have been running a giveaway for my um, New South Wales Australia audience members for packs of ayam sauces okay so if you are from New South Wales say hello and your name will go in the door but you need to actually be a follower on Twitch right uh, Fuwa thanks for following McKay thanks for following Jeff uh, thanks for following did I miss anyone else I think I might have sorry I was so focused on doing this 
Um, so far, thick soya sauce. Uh, light soya sauce. I'm gonna throw in some pepper and also I'm gonna throw in some uh, garlic, all right? You know I love my garlic. Okay, I'm gonna throw some whole garlic in here. And I want five spice powder. Everyone should know five spice powder. You should be able to find it at even your Western supermarket if you live in Australia. I don't know what it's like in other parts of the world, but like I say, it's quite pungent and overpowering. I am not a huge fan of five spice powder. But this dish traditionally does call for it and if you didn't do what i am doing now if you were using the whole duck you would usually actually be uh sticking five spice powder in the cavity of the duck and letting it sit for like a couple of hours okay so i'm gonna put in like half a teaspoon okay that should be enough for me are you not using chicken powder hey come on <laughs> uh. Oh, cool. Thanks for that. Uh, this one. I just uh, got the recipe for the Sega. Cool. Okay, so here we go. Chicken powder, all right. <laughs> I'll put some chicken powder in there. And sugar. Okay, I'm just going to put about, it's about one and a half tablespoons of sugar. We'll see how we go. We're going to adjust the flavors at the end. Okay, so I'm going to actually, uh, in the absence of the bones, because remember the bones I'm using for the soup, um, I am going to add some chicken concentrate here, but look, just water would actually do the job as well. So not too much, okay? This is going to produce more liquid as well when it's pressure cooked. So we're going to pressure cook it for 20 minutes maybe. on meat. Finau, how you doing? <laughs> I wish I could cook. Everybody can cook, all right. So um, on to the salted vegetables. Just let me quickly hop on and see if I can find a recipe for the salted vegetables because I haven't done it in a very long time. It's very easy, all right. I didn't even think to look up the recipe for it. Salted vegetable duck soup. Okay. <laughs> salted vegetable duck soup. All right, here we go. See if there's anything I'm missing. Okay. Okay, like I said, tomatoes, which I don't have, but the salted vegetable. There are lots of different types of salted vegetables, by the way, guys, just so you know, but this is uh, one of the more commonly used ones. Uh, and you can buy this at your local Asian grocery store. I always tell people that um, not all Asian grocery stores are alike, all right? Just as not all Asians are the same, all right? Uh, I know I'm stating the obvious, but like there are grocery stores, depending on what ethnicity or what demographic the particular grocery store um, caters to, they, their stock is going to vary, okay? So salt of vegetable is something that <laughs> is something that is used widely across like uh cultures that have a uh, chinese populations okay so you should be able to find this in any grocery store that's uh um you know run by um, chinese slash asians okay whereas certain ingredients like uh, shrimp paste and that sort of stuff you may struggle to find in a grocery store run by a person from china say you know, so, you know, because shrimp paste is predominantly used in Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, Singapore, those sorts of countries. Okay, so those are the kind of ethnicities you want to, like, um, um, for which the grocery stores, um, you know, cater to that you want to target. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And usually, in all honesty, I, I think, do we throw in the whole lot? I'm trying to remember the last time I ate this. It's just soup. I'm just going to cut it into rough, like, pieces, okay? And usually these salted veggies you can also use in like a steamed fish, right? So it's popular in Chinese steamed fish. Usually it's used in conjunction with tomatoes, okay? So you can have like a, a Teochew steamed fish with like ginger, salted vegetable and tomatoes. And yeah, that gives it a really nice flavor. And you should 
rinse this, okay, because it's quite salty. So just throw some water over this. I'm just going to rinse it out a bit. Wipe this dry. And like I said, no tomatoes, so I'm a bit trying to figure out. Oh, well, the other thing you want is you want a little bit of sourness to this soup, all right? So we're going to throw in some tamarind, uh, tamarind slices. Let me show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Okay. So this is not the same tamarind that you get in the tamarind pulp, all right? It's a different variety of uh, sour fruit. Um, but uh, in English, we just call it tamarind. I know it's being a little bit confusing, but, um, but it does the same thing. It provides sourness to the dish, okay? And the recipe I just pulled up says um, it calls for sour plums as well. I've never used sour plums, and I don't recall my mom ever using sour plums in her soup either. I know French shared recipe. I got my husband translating everything. <laughs> oh, cool, <laughs> very cool. I I do that too sometimes. Sometimes some of the best recipes are written in other languages. Um, like Malay, I have no problem reading. The like Chinese, I don't actually read, even though I speak it. Sort of thing. So sometimes I just use Google Translate. Okay, so let's render this fat while this is uh, the other stuff's cooking. All right. Let me just actually let me just strain out the water here, and I'm just going to strain out some of the water in this as well. You see the difference between uh, my two pressure cookers? Once the instant pot over here, instant pot, sorry. It doesn't talk to you, it just beeps, all right? This is the optimum pressure cook, and it talks to you and tells you what it's doing at what stage and whatever. And it will tell you at some point, it'll say, cooking is done, and then you can just open the lid and everything's all hunky dory um, The instant pot doesn't do that, all right? And also, this one automatically releases the uh, pressure for you, whereas the instant pot like at the end of, oops, just reminded me to close the uh, vent. Let me put on my glasses. I always forget with the instant pot, you have to actually turn the vent um, close. Okay, seal. All right. Green mustard is the same as mui choy. No, mui choy is different. Mui choy is the, uh, green must mustard is ham choy. Um, mui choy is, that very kind of soft black um, vegetable that we use a lot in the hakka cooking. Uh, but okay, let me just get my stove. I know you guys in North America uh, are. Uh, starting to get cold, but it's getting really hot over here. I'm actually tempted to use my cast iron pan for this to do the rendering. They'll kill two birds with one stone, you know, help me to uh, treat my cast iron pan. Let's do that. Okay, so this is the cast iron pan. I'm not sure if I'm even going to find the smell of the duck rendering like... Um, off putting because I'm not a huge like like I said I don't like the smell of fat animal fat you know but uh, should be all right cast iron pants looking a little bit manky
And if you're new to my uh, broadcast every Saturday night, so I do cooking broadcast three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And on Saturday night, we have just what's called a uh, campfire stories and community chat. All right, so it's just a bit of fun. We just uh, I just read out some Asian ghost stories, <laughs> just for fun. And in between, we uh, you can you guys can still ask me questions about food or about anything else. All right, so it's just a chance for you to engage with my community. If you're not on Discord in particular, the other place, of course, is Discord. What are you doing with the duck fat? Remember frying up potato using duck fat was so good. There you go. That's, uh, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> potato wedges. <laughs> I was actually gonna use it for a char kway tiao and see how it, how different it tastes. Cause you know with char kway tiao people always go, oh, it's the is the the lard in it that makes it taste good. I don't eat pork, you see. But uh, I thought I might use it to uh, do some personal char kway tiao and see how different it tastes. But yeah, you can buy duck fat here and it's quite expensive, you know. That's how I figured like, since I hate eating the duck fats anyway, I might as well do something with it. Yummy. <laughs> but put, put potato wedges might be a good idea. To be fair, I don't actually eat potatoes that much. I don't need the extra carbs. I already eat so much rice and so much noodles, you know. <laughs> I'm going to throw out the parson's nose, all right, the butt, because I don't particularly like uh, the idea of <laughs> rendering fat from the butt. And if you go to like Malaysia and you watch the Chinese hawkers, I don't know if they still do it, but in the past you'll see them like, you know, during the uh, slow parts of the day, they'll have like a big wok, lots of pork fat and like, and they'll be like basically stirring around in a big wok and it just makes me gag because I can't stand the smell. I have to hold my nose when I walk past, but uh, yeah. <laughs> If you want to fast track this, you can actually add some oil to it, all right, and basically fry this up. Here we go. I think I'm running out of gas again. Has anyone watched uh, Batman vs. Superman? I finally watched it last night. Because uh, I finally, I finally subscribed to Netflix. Because <laughs> I'm so cheap, I don't want to pay ten bucks a month. But I finally subscribed. <laughs> and yeah, one of the first things I watched was Batman vs Superman. Holy moly, what a, what a long movie! So I kept looking at the clock because I'm, I don't like, I don't have a television, so I, I don't actually, I feel really guilty if I watch anything like at length. Oh, Chu Yao Cha, crunchy pork fat. <laughs> yeah, you're so Chinese, uh, this one. <laughs> I, I, I feel sick at the thought of it. Yeah, I could actually cut this into like little pork lard chunks, you know, and then use that, like, because this is gonna crisp up, and use that in lieu of uh, the pork lard crisp. But no, I can't stand the smell of pork lard. Look at the oil that's coming out. But yeah, if I added some more oil to this and had these cut diced up into little bits, I could actually make like duck crisps from it, right? And then use that to sprinkle. I love Netflix, so many series and movies to watch. Then you feel though like you're you're you're, waste, you're wasting your life from watching all this stuff because th you can binge watch. But in America, you you guys have like a lot more options than we do over here. But I'm not complaining because, like I said, I start with nothing anyway. The only time I watch anything is like on YouTube up until I got Netflix yesterday, and now. 
they're making you pick all you know the kind of movies you want to watch, and then they're offering you all these suggestions because there's this so there's this massive conspiracy to get you hooked up to uh, <laughs> uh, you know hooked on to watching binge watching all these shows because they keep offering you all these recommendations, and I feel so guilty. But holy moly, I kept watching the, the clock yesterday, watching uh, Batman vs. Superman. Not that it was a particularly bad movie, but it was just so incredibly long and drawn out, you know. I just got bored, really, for parts of it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Since watching is really bad, I agree. <laughs> See? I mean, like, to be fair, when I'm doing stuff and I'm not live streaming, I can have stuff like on YouTube on in the background, right? Because I do I, 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 whatever random stuff, whether it's a, you know, whether it's a speech, you know, or even a, a, a Bible sermon or whether it's a TV show, not TV show, but like I watch a lot of stuff like uh, those real crime, true crime stuff, like forensic files, you know, they can p play in the background because I don't need to be glued onto the screen to know what's going on. Uh, but yeah, when you're watching like a uh, actual like scripted TV shows and you're watching like yeah a movie, then you do have to be glued onto the screen. But yeah, it's so <laughs> it's so conflicting. <laughs> it's not like you can like write a blog post while you're watching her the show, you know. <laughs> and I've got so many blog posts I'm so behind on. Look at the amount of fat that's coming out. Holy crap! And it's spitting a bit as well because there's a bit of a uh, moisture from the duck, all right? But yeah, this is some, something like this would be a good candidate for like if you're going to season a wok or in my case a, a cast iron pan here. Do you still write for Huffington Post? Yes, I do. <laughs> Look, uh, more to the point, I blog uh, on the Huffington Post, all right? So it's, uh, there's no pressure for me to submit anything. And in fact, I, it's more of a kind of like a, a prestige thing to say that you're a Huffington Post, Post contributor. But that's all it means. <laughs> I actually get more traction sharing my, my blogs on my own website and whatever than I do on the Huffington Post. But like I said, the Huffington Post gives me the, that level of prestige. But yeah, I do, yeah. One day, I reckon, everybody will be able to blog on the Huffington Post, right? The way you blog on WordPress. I think that's the way they're headed. headed. But at this point in time, it's an exclusive invite only, and I'm one, one of the people who managed to get one. So I should probably, like, uh, you know, exploit that a little bit more, but I don't. I just say, oh, I'm a Huffington Post contributor, but yeah. But I've seen other people try to exploit it by, um, by, by, by getting paid for it, right? So the brand, you know, wants the prestige of saying that they were featured on the Huffington Post, they could theoretically get one of these Huffington Post contributors to write something about them there. And I could do that too, but I just don't. Just, I'm, just, I'm just too focused on cooking. <laughs> I could even throw my recipes on the Huffington Post, you know, so, and if they like it, they might actually feature it on their homepage or whatever, or share it on their social media, but generally, yeah, generally they don't, so it's almost like me having an extra blogging platform, really, it's just the, um, yeah, the name recognition value there. I hate the overly strong duck taste smell when I bite into the roast duck. Oh, holy crap. So you don't eat duck. I, 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 I like it, but like, I actually still have some roast duck left from my last visit to the grocery store, actually. Yeah, yeah. Look. <laughs> I, I like it, but I, I know what you mean, because it can be a little bit strong, right? That's why I don't like the fatty part. I, I, I trim off all the fat, like I use my, uh, uh, yeah, I, I can't stand the fat in the uh, roast duck. I always ask for a skinny duck because of that. <laughs> I 
But I've thought about making my own Peking duck, or at least claiming that I can make my own Peking duck, but it's so involved and it's so like, it sounds like it could potentially be messy that I put it off. So if I, I need to actually own a, an air compressor to be able to make a proper Peking duck. And not only that, you basically, you, 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 you basically need an air compressor to pump air into the duct to essentially separate the skin from the duct's uh, body, all right, so that the fat can actually um, get released easily and you end up with a really crispy skin when you roast it. But th my problem is in between the air compressing thing and um, actually roasting it, you actually need to let it air dry for like about eight hours or something like that. And I don't know where in my current setup I can actually leave a duck safely air drying. Hang on, just let me just turn it off, decline. <laughs> I do eat them sometimes, certain parts is just too much. Okay, cool. I always, I, I buy the duck, right? And then I, uh, and then I, I don't finish it because I get tired of it. But what my mom usually do, does, my stepmom, is that she uh, stir fry, she shreds the meat and then she stir fries it with uh, the chai flour, the gou choy fa, if you know it, and that's really nice. But I can't seem to find uh, like uh, garlic chai flour at my regular grocery stores. You know, I don't know whether it's something I have to hunt down in Cabramatta or something like that. See, this thing is just spitting like all over that's why i hate doing this sort of stuff it's just uh, <laughs> it's just spitting oil all over my work area you can leave it in my house <laughs> you know it's not it's not that it's just that it just seems fundamentally like um from a from a hygiene perspective having a half raw uh, half raw duck right because before you do that you actually bath it in like um like like this marinade and stuff like that right um like a half raw duck hanging to, like usually they hang it up with the hooks right um in the special area in the in the in the restaurant but yeah like <laughs> so i'm gonna hang it up and like in this summer heat in australia it just seems like you're asking to get food poisoning you know that's why how i think anyway <laughs> Oh, oh, oh damn it I'm getting I'm getting oil splatter on my legs now oh holy crap that just got into my eye okay I'm gonna turn this off I'm done frying this you see the amount of oil that is generated okay so this is gonna be very hot and that's the thing about cast iron pans that's uh a little bit tricky to handle is that the everything is <laughs> I know right <laughs> all right so that's the uh, duck fat here you go and some of it is crispy enough that if you really want to you can actually uh, you can probably eat all right and I could probably throw the rest into the air fryer and air fry it if I want you know if I, but it's so it's so thick I'm not sure it's worth it. Look, let me take it out, and then I'll, I'll think about it. I might throw it into the air fryer, all right? That way we get four things out of it. We get the fat, we get the uh, crispy duck crackling, we get uh, the braised duck, and we get this uh, soup. One of the reasons I don't fry stuff at home. I know, right? Yeah, yeah. That's one of the reasons why the air fryer is handy, you know? I mean, obviously, you, if I air fried this, I'd have to... I guess I could, really. I could have air fried this and just collected the oil from the basket the bottom of the basket at the end but, uh, yeah let me just wash up this here I'll be back This is the reason why I don't like 
um, not just frying stuff, but also because I don't, that's why I don't like um, actually chopping chicken and chopping like stuff on the bone at home because it just splatters. Okay. So, see, these, this is still quite fatty, right? I've got enough, all the oil that I want from it, but uh, let's see if we can make good crackling out of the rest. I'm gonna try and snip it into smaller chunks as well. And you want to eat it as is, you can sprinkle it with some chicken powder and some pepper. It's 12 a.m. haven't even been to sleep yet. Cook something. <laughs> Cook some duck. <laughs> Alright, let's cut up. I'll find a pair of scissors so I can snip these into smaller chunks. I'm, I'm, I'm pining for a cup of coffee. I put the kettle on over an hour ago and I forgot to make a cup of coffee and now so I really need a coffee. Okay. This has got like, um, it looks like the esophagus actually. <laughs> so I don't think that is going to work out. Well, that not that bit anyway. Uh, that's good crackling material. HC, how you doing? Yeah, I'm not sure about the uh, <laughs> the quality of these crackling. <laughs> They're a little bit feral. Okay, so there's a couple of pieces just from the frying process. Okay, so they. And if you want, you can actually crush it in the blender and it becomes like crumbly, like, uh, and then maybe if you sprinkle it, it'll be all right. Just try this. I'm gonna try and reduce the cooking time on the, this thing here. I'm going to release the pressure because I set it on the default setting which was 35 minutes for cooking meat and I don't need 35 minutes okay see all the oil here I'm going to move this away and the other thing I forgot to put in the um, Pressure cooker is ginger actually. So you can use um, galangal as well. It seems as though most recipes call for galangal with the duck stew, right? But um, my mom just used ginger as far as I remember, all right? So I'm just gonna throw in ginger. Okay, let's go get a couple of pieces here. I'm gonna throw in more garlic here. And I'm gonna get some, uh, some um, mushrooms. Alright, so this is uh, Chinese mushrooms over here. You can buy them dried. They can be quite expensive, so look for the cheapest variety. Alright. Okay, this is what they look like. So you need to soak them in hot water for a few minutes to soften them up. in my kitchen. Water. 
open the kettle. The water is not quite hot enough, but we'll see how we go. Have you made ninja? I've been thinking of making some ninja. What's that? <laughs> Am I said, and I pronouncing it right. What what cuisine is it? Ninja. PG, hello. How you doing? Hi, PG from YouTube. And as usual, I always tell people that uh, Periscope hates me. People hop on for two seconds and then realize, oh, it's only Jackie and no hop on. <laughs> I don't know whether it's me or whether it's the fact that I, I stream uh, in landscape mode, right? But Periscope, if you are on Periscope at all, everyone worth their salt uh, stream in portrait mode, which I always find really like unsuitable for food streaming because uh, portrait mode is just you talking to the camera and you can't see either side of you and I feel that you need to it's an Italian spreadable spice pork sausage oh okay you lost me at pork <laughs> I don't eat pork spicy pork sausage the thing about making sausages like um, <clears throat> is like the casings okay I don't know where I can get like non non pork Casing sort of thing because I don't need pork, but otherwise I would actually have a go at um, some sausage recipes in all honesty because it's always intrigued me. Never tried making sausage before. Need a spreadable. If it's spreadable, does that mean it doesn't have a casing? I can always replace uh, pork with chicken, I guess. Um, which is what I do for most of my recipes. Anything that calls for pork, I replace with chicken generally. So these mushrooms, usually um, the way we handle them, could have a look around for synthetic casing. Yeah. yeah, usually the stems stay like really tough. Okay, so if you're eating Chinese mushrooms, usually you will cut off the stem before you throw it in. Well, we did anyway, my family. I don't know if that's part of the course. It's spread spreadable doesn't need casing. Yeah, okay, cool. I'm gonna have to Google. Let me write it down. Nduja. Why does it have it doesn't sound Italian with the N in front of it? It's very curious. Okay, I'm gonna turn this on. Okay, so the pressure has been released completely with this, all right, so, but it's runny as to be expected when you pressure cook anything. So this was in the pressure cooker for about 20 minutes, uh, less than that, about 18 minutes or so. Uh, it probably didn't need to be in there that long, it's just kind of like I was busy doing something else, let's see. Okay, so the meat is still firm, which is good. So what we're gonna do now is just braise it and reduce it, okay? And then if it needs, to be thickened, we can thicken it with some um, tapioca starch um, mix as well. I'm gonna actually start cutting the stems off the mushrooms, right? And then in they go. Okay, and just give it a bit of a squeeze as well because it's been soaking in water, it absorbs water like a sponge. Okay, so you squeeze it and then cut off the stem. Okay, throw it in. And you've seen me make stuffed vegetables a lot. Back in Malaysia, we would stuff the mushrooms as well, right? And then we came to Australia, we realized mu dried mushrooms are really expensive in Australia, and then we found fresh mushrooms. So instead of stuffing dried mushrooms, which are a little bit finicky in and of themselves because you know they're wet when you're stuffing them, so you need to dry them, otherwise the fish paste may not stick properly and all that. Um, so when we switched to using like Australian button mushrooms, it was much, much easier. Okay, so 
if you're just joining us now, this has got duck fillets in here, okay? Like I said, usually more traditionally, you would do the whole duck and you would braise it in a big wok and you'll braise it for hours, okay? <laughs> you'll, like, from start to finish, it'll take hours because you're meant to actually, like, uh, marinate the duck with the uh, five spice powder and whatnot originally, right? But instead of doing that, I just fast tracked it by pressure cooking it with some of the seasoning, which is this, uh, what we call uh, dark or thick soya sauce. But in this particular case, for this particular brand, it's labeled as cooking caramel, all right? So keep an eye out for this. I know in North America, a lot of you guys say you can't get a hold of it in your part. I don't know. I think I think um, this one, Mummy said she can get it in New York, but I'm not sure about everyone else. But you, you certainly can buy it online, I'm pretty sure. Okay, you hear that beeping? That's my Instant Pot saying the, uh, the, the duck bones already. Okay, so just throwing this in. There you go. So I'm putting a lot of uh, mushrooms in here, as you can see, because I like I like eating mushrooms. Okay, not all of them are as soft as um, some of the others. Okay, so hopefully cooking it long enough will help soften them all evenly. Okay, so that's the leftover mushroom juice. Sometimes some people use it for other things, but I don't. So the sauce again is this primarily this thick caramel sauce, light soya sauce, and I'm using the Ayam brand, okay? Light soya sauce, and also some sugar, and some five spice powder, uh, some chicken powder, you know me, uh, some ginger and garlic in here, okay? So we're gonna braise it till it thickens up and everything is nice and soft and tender. I'm gonna adjust the flavors. What did I use this spoon for? Okay. Okay, the flavor is great, right? And in fact, I think if I reduce this any further, it's gonna taste a little bit too salty, but I can always like uh, add more liquid to this and then thicken it, okay? So I, don't, I, I want a bit of sauce for this so that uh, Noah, my kid, can eat this with his rice because he loves eating sauce with rice. So the sauce tastes great at the moment, but I wanna simmer the Mushrooms a little bit longer. So I'm gonna add some, some of my chicken stock concentrate, but you can just put water in there. Obviously, I'm just trying to use up my chicken stock, that's all. Okay, so add a bit more, and then we're gonna reduce it back down. Andre, how you doing? I use the same cooking caramel. Oh, cool, there you go. Duck with apple is Polish. Really? Duck with apple? Duck with apple? How strange is that? Do you roast it or? The funny thing is in Australia, all these like poultry that you buy, if you buy them whole, they always have instructions, cooking instructions. And the cooking instructions basically are just throw it in the oven, all right, and roast the hell out of it. But in Asia, like if you're an Asian, you'll be like, oh, forget about the instructions, we're gonna chop this up and do it our style, you know? But I think like to the Western mindset, if you were to buy a whole chicken or whole duck, um, your only reason for doing it is because you wanna throw it in the oven. Whereas like, yeah, if you're a Chinese Asian cook, you would <laughs> want to use it for other things. Hey, Sammy, how you doing? <laughs> Your dish is making me really hungry. <laughs> yeah, look, see, it doesn't look like there's a lot of meat here, but that's, it's going to be plenty for Noah and myself. But this is from a 2.2 kilo duck, right? With a five pound duck. And basically I cut out all the meat. Well, s most of it anyway. And the rest of it is just like the, the what I'm using in the soup. Let's see how that's looking. <laughs> Okay, that's the other thing, like when you hear the bake with the instant pot, it means that it's the cooking time is done, but it hasn't automatically released the pressure for you, unlike my uh, pressure cook, right? My optimum pressure cook. So I have to actually manually release the pressure. I'm gonna go quickly grab myself a cup of coffee, guys. Hang on.
Hey, mommy. <laughs> I know, that's so weird, right, Sammy? <laughs> So this one, mommy, are you a stay-at-home mom or a... Anyone from New South Wales watching Nasblue? Thanks for following. <laughs> what type of coffee do you drink? Coffee or white? I drink the three-in-one coffee. <laughs> I'll show you. Oh, here you go. <coughs> this is the one I drink. A hot, a hot three-in-one coffee, and the, they do it obviously a few different types. And the one I drink is a uh, what's labeled as a uh, lebe gao, extra gao, which means extra strong coffee. But essentially, it's like coffee with creamer and sugar, for those who don't know what three-in-one coffee is. Um, but I actually did a TV segment on Malaysian coffee, right, for a show about coffee. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and so I had to do some research on it. But Malaysian coffee, apparently, you know how, like, in Colombia, you know, they talk about all this fancy, like, coffee uh, varieties and that sort of stuff. In Malaysia, the coffee variety uh, that was brought into Malaysia by the colonialists, the British colonialists, uh, were an inferior variety of coffee, all right? Uh, I, I forget the reason why they, I, I think it was a deliberate reason, uh, a decision to bring that particular variety of coffee in and to, to plant it. So it's an inferior variety of coffee that actually tastes bitter, okay? So because it tasted bitter, the locals had to kind of like um, roast it a certain way. So back in the day, they would roast it with butter, all right? So the Ipo, people in Ipo in Malaysia are known for their Ipo coffee because it was roasted in butter, okay? Um, to help mask the bitterness, okay? But in, uh, in the process, they actually came up with something which I actually find a lot more palatable than your usual like expensive Starbucks, whatever type coffee. So I'm very cheap when it comes to coffee. I buy these three in one coffee like this. <laughs> I don't think I can be a stay at home mom. I work part time now. I have to send my girls to school. Oh, okay, cool, right. What sort of work do you do, uh, this one? But apparently nowadays, instead of using butter, they use palm oil to roast the coffee, <laughs> which might freak some people out. <laughs> but there's actually, in all honesty, there's a lot of misunderstanding around palm oil. There's um, there's healthy palm oil and there's unhealthy palm oil and also there's environmentally sustainable palm oil plantations in Malaysia as well. Like, I'm not saying all of them are but um, the ones I have actually worked with are actually plantations that are environmentally sustainable and have won a lot of awards for their uh, environmental vision sort of thing. So not all pa palm oil is the same and not all palm oil plantations are the same. Something you, keep to, you need to keep in mind all right, before you jump on the hysteria bandwagon. Okay, so 15 minutes in the air fryer, and this is what you got. Okay. I think it could be a little bit crispier. Some of it's uh, crispy enough, so um, the rest could be a little bit crispier. I'm just gonna roast the rest of this one another five minutes. Jonathan, how you doing? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, so this actually smells really good, all right. And let me go ahead and grab my coffee. And also check on the, the soup stock. Freeware, how you doing? I know, that. I'm not even sure if I need to thicken it because it's quite a nice consistency now. Let me just taste test it one more time. Okay, 
yeah, tastes tastes pretty perfect. My mother is Malaysian, so the recipe is a password. They've been nailing it for me. Oh, cool. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Can't go wrong with Malaysian, right? Okay, I'm just going to thicken this slightly. And then we are going to move on to the next thing, the soup. So I'm just using tapioca starch. Definitely can't go wrong. <laughs> so I've just got like a, just over a teaspoon of tapioca starch. And here you can use corn starch, you can use potato starch, right? Just mix it with some water. I've probably got too much here, I might not need all of it, okay? You can drizzle this over and move it away. Okay. There you go. See how quickly it thickens up. Okay. I just gotta check that the mushrooms are softened sufficiently. Yeah, they are. Braised duck would be great for noodles too. Con oh yeah, oh yeah, that's right, eh? Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, voila, here you go. So it's quite dark, you can see it. Lots of sauce. And then tart it up with a some coriander. <laughs> okay. Just mix that over here. Okay, I'll, I'll just bring the soup pot over. Here you go, so it's just got no flavor, nothing. It's just the duck bones in the soup. Let me just see how tender the bones are, the, the, the meat is. Okay, so it's, it's, it's already t soft enough, okay? And that I cooked for, what, 15 minutes, was it? I forget now. So we're gonna throw in the Chinese uh, salted mustard greens, okay? I, have, I don't actually need all of it, but <sighs> yeah, I could probably throw the rest into a takeaway box and freeze it. Hey Remy, how you doing? So again, traditionally you would want some uh, tomatoes in this. The salted mustard greens is gonna add the saltiness to this. Just gonna add a little bit more. Confession, I'm sitting in the kitchen eating my leftover curry chicken now at this hour. <laughs> curry chicken is very addictive though, you gotta admit. Okay, so I've got these um, tamarind slices, okay. Here you go. And that just adds sourness. In, in, in the absence of that, look, the tomatoes will add some sourness to it as well, okay, if you had tomatoes. Um, otherwise, you can add a dash of like uh, lemon juice in here. And of course, uh, my chicken powder, okay. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, this is basically what the agents use for seasoning. It does, um, it's kind of like glorified like chicken stock uh, cubes in powder form, but it's nicer in my opinion. And you can taste it, but Westerners like think, oh, you know, this sounds really alien, but I never buy things like crisps and all that. I bought a pack of crisps the other day, uh, for Noah, and I tasted it, it tastes exactly like it's got chicken powder in it. So if you know what I mean, it's got that like lingering kind of like a, a saltiness like with a little bit of a umami, otherwise known as MSG <laughs> flavor to it, okay? Yeah, chicken stock with ajinomoto, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> mm, that's my coffee, thank God for coffee. Okay, uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of sugar to the soup as well, okay? So I'm just going to add about 
This is an American tablespoon, which is 15 mils, which is two, uh, three quarters of a tablespoon of an Australian tablespoon. Okay, so Australian and American measurements are different in that regard. Big Bean, how you doing? I'm worse this one. <laughs> I'm eating instant ramen. Okay, that's bad. <laughs> Let's try this. Okay. It is definitely missing the damn tomatoes, but it's it's, it's alright. Okay. It needs um the saltiness hasn't quite come through yet, so we're gonna let it simmer a little bit. Um so we can before we start adjusting the flavor, I have a habit of being really impatient because like, I would be inclined to now actually add some salt or more chicken powder and stuff like that, alright? But I'm going to hold off because I'm going to assume that the saltiness is going to leach out of the salted vegetables, salted mustard greens in a bit. Oh, here we go. Baked bean. Who likes baked beans? <laughs> <laughs> Another Bob Ross. <laughs> what exactly are we making? We have made, uh, we, we started out with a duck and we made a braised uh, duck dish over here. All right, duck and mushroom with um, garlic and ginger and whatnot. We made some duck uh, fat crisps, okay, um, that I'm gonna probably use to sprinkle over like noodles and that sort of stuff, fried noodles. The way you have pork lard crisps. I don't need pork, okay, so I'm hoping the duck will be a good substitute for it. We rendered the duck fat, so we've got a bunch of like uh, duck fat sitting in the background. And right now we are making some duck soup. The duck soup is uh, with salted Chinese greens. And like I said, this should have tomatoes in it. I don't have any tomatoes, so I'm gonna add that on later on, but the tomatoes will give it a nice little a little bit of a piquant flavor um, and that's the rest of the crisps over here okay let's just transfer them out and once these crisps cool down I'm gonna actually just zip them quickly in my food processor just to make them a little bit more crumbly because they're a bit nuggety at the moment. And in all honesty when I was rendering the duck fat it didn't smell bad at all the way uh, the way pork lard does. I hate the smell of pork like pork lard. Okay no worries Remy. Yeah it worked. <laughs> <Blodger>. <laughs> okay, it does need more flavor this. Okay, so I might add more chicken powder. Okay, the saltiness is there, but it needs more body. I'm gonna add a little bit more sugar to this. I'm taking a little bit of risk because the tomatoes will actually change the flavor at some point. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a bit more, another tablespoon of sugar in here. I'm going to head back to work too. I'll be back to be hungry again. Okay, no worries, Jonathan. See ya. <laughs> it's good to be hungry. <laughs> I eat too much. I'm never hungry and yet I eat. It's the quickest way to put on weight is to eat when you're not hungry. Okay. Let's try this. Need more body. Till next time. <laughs> right here. Okay, more chicken powder. In all honesty, I can't really taste the duck in this. This tastes, at this point, like just straight out. It could be chicken soup for all I know, really. <laughs> Roast pork, shut up. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay, now it's salty. Okay, I might have to add more sugar to balance out the flavor. Okay, now I can taste the saltiness a bit more. 
I'm gonna, I'm not gonna mess with it too much because it's nearly there, and like I said, I'm gonna assume the tomatoes are gonna um, kind of help balance the flavor out a bit. Don't see many fellow Aussies on Twitch. Keep up. Oh, thank you, so fresh spawn. <laughs> Here we go. Slotty Bob Ross, thanks for following. And thanks for following, Sir Fresh Pond. Cook Pal. Uh, thanks for following Cook Pal. <laughs> Something. Cook Cake. Okay, Cook Cakes. Okay, this is getting there. Okay, now I'm, uh, now I'm tasting the, 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 the flavor of the duck a bit more. So you can actually, in theory, just kind of like shred the meat from the pick the meat from the duck carcass all right to go with your soup in all honesty when i drink a clear soup i don't like there to be i don't like it to be too meaty okay i like the flavor of the soup um but i don't want like too much stuff around it let's hear it for cooking duck <laughs> damn right <laughs> okay here you go <laughs> Okay, nearly there, nearly there. We're gonna simmer a little bit. Hopefully, more flavor comes out of the duck bones. Okay, and it already had like the chicken stock. I'm, I'm thinking I should have added more chicken stock to it because it tastes to me like it just it tastes a little bit thin, if you know what I mean. So fresh, and I was like watching my mom cook pea and ham soup when she uses Christmas. Exactly right. That's it. That's right. You know, I'm thinking I actually have a um, you know, those Chinese roast duck. I actually have some of it left over in my fridge and I'm, te I'm tempted to pull the bones out of it and throw add, add to this, you know. <laughs> but yeah, that's what that's what my family does at Christmas as well. Like, nothing goes to waste. Hey, even the prawn heads from the prawn, right? From the, the, the Christmas prawns, we save the prawn heads to make a soup with it. And the turkey bones, we save that, save that as well for, for porridge, for Chinese congee. <laughs> I should do a whole thing on how to uh <laughs> how to stretch your Christmas budget. <laughs> hmm. Okay, you see all the shredded the meat just coming off, falling off the bones now a little bit. But let me dish this up so you can see what it looks like. gonna pretend there's a lump of uh, tomato in this all right guys so many yummy duck recipes <laughs> so my herbs are all dried so it's not not the best but I'm gonna throw some chili in here just for color though it would be a little bit odd traditionally to have chili in this soup Soup. Like I said, it's meant to be thin, all right, guys. I know, uh, but that's how I—that's how I like it with like very little l meaty bits in there. And that again is the braised duck. All right, it's very easy to make if you are if you can be bothered buying a duck and defrosting it. Like I said, it took me a couple of hours to defrost it under running water. Okay, just a slow trickle, by the way. If ever you need to defrost anything, then. Um, you know, don't fill up a big bucket of water and, and, and just let it sit there. What you want is running water. So stick your, you know, whether it's seafood or it's chicken or whatever it is, um, stick it in a tub and have it like 
a uh, very uh, slow trickle of uh, cold running water from your tap. Don't use hot water, use cold running water. And then the, the circulation of the water will help to, uh, uh, you know, defrost um, your ingredients a lot faster. Okay, but having said that, the duck was quite big. It was 2.2 kilos. So that did ultimately end up taking about, like, I'm thinking, oh, maybe about an hour and a half or so. All right. I'll just her say what is she making? It's basic. How do you make a peking duck? Peking duck is a little bit involved. I was telling people earlier on today, you need to you need an air compressor. And I actually saw an air compressor at my local, you know, those uh, not two dollar shops, but you know, those kind of like, I don't, you know, as seen on TV shops, right? Um, they sold an air com compressor for about 40 or 50 bucks, like mini air compressor. I thought, oh, maybe I should buy that so I can actually finally make Peking duck. But Peking duck, you use a whole duck and you're meant to use an egg, basically like, um, you need two people, all right? You need someone to kind of like um, uh, close. You, you need all the cavities closed, and basically with the open cavity, you pump air into it, give it a big blast of air so that the skin separates from the body, from the frame. Um, and then you meant to air dry it, all right? Like you have a fan or something like that, hanging it, like you gotta hang it up on a hook and air dry it, like uh, fan dry it for a good eight hours or something like that. So it's just kind of like a little bit icky to make in your home kitchen all right that's part of the reason why i haven't really attempted it at this point i do have a barbecue i've got a Zig, uh, ziegler barbecue sitting on my balcony now which i think would be perfect for the roasting part of it so i am still considering making it but you know in australia with all the flies and stuff like that you've got a duck sitting like you know that's uh, like <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't know if that's uh, such a good idea did you put in uh, some dried chili as well in the uh in the braised duck thing uh no i didn't i didn't so no chili at all in this i like eating this with a garlic chili sauce um but no i didn't put any chili in here nor in the soup if that's what you mean <laughs> could you use a weber yeah weber basically works the same way as like uh, the ziegler and brown barbecue by the way if you're australian guys uh when i hit 2000 followers i'm gonna do a draw uh you have two people have uh will win a Ziegler and Brown barbecue, courtesy of Ziegler and Brown bar barbecues. All right, they're worth seven hundred and forty-nine dollars each, but um, it's only available if you live in Australia because obviously you don't want to ship a huge uh, barbecue overseas. All right, so uh, Slotty, thanks for following. So <laughs> make sure you keep an eye when I hit two thousand followers. I don't think I'm too far away from that. Okay, but I have so I've been announcing this for weeks and weeks now. But so I've actually finally set a time limit for when I hit 2,000 followers, which is the end of November, okay? If I don't hit 2,000 followers by the end of November, I'm going to actually claim the barbecues for myself because they're actually basically, uh, <laughs> they're actually uh, essentially uh, offered to me for work I did for, as in like for some recipes I developed for Ziegler and Brown, okay? So um, this shouldn't be too hard. How do you spell the Ziegler? Um, Z I E G L E R Ziegler and Brown. So, um, but it is um, it, it's also called the Ziggy for short. Z I G G Y the Ziggy. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you know you might be in a chance to win that if you're an Australian sort of thing. So we do draw uh, only on Twitch, guys. If you're watching this on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope. Uh, nobody's watching on Periscope. <laughs> um, you were watching on YouTube, uh, Facebook, or Periscope. You need to follow me on Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash Jackie M Food for your chance to go in the draw for one of two Ziegler and Brown barbecue units, okay? Um, uh, I live in Adelaide, so I'm in. Yes, damn right you are in. <laughs> You'd be surprised, like what you said earlier, you know, not many Aussies on. Uh, Twitch, so my Aussie regulars are, <laughs> are, are keeping a very close eye on these two barbecues. Like I said, I remember, well, there you go. Awesome, awesome. Um, I have other giveaways that uh, I just gave away a Lenovo mini speaker just uh, on my last broadcast, but I have other giveaways. These are for New South Wales residents only. Anyone from New South Wales here today? Two, I, need, uh, I need at least uh, two people for, from New South Wales to do a how do I enter? You just uh, follow me on, twi uh, twi uh, on Twitch. All right, so the Ziegler and Brown, I'm going to actually open it to all my Twitch followers. <sighs> I'm trying to think logistically how I'm gonna do this. All right, usually we do the draw while I'm broadcasting, okay? So I'll announce it before I go live. So you actually, 
need to respond within 24 hours on my broadcast. So you actually don't just follow and then never watch me again. All right, you got to keep an eye on the announcements uh, because if nobody claims the prize, we're going to do another draw for someone else or a chance to win it. Um, but <laughs> um, how do you join? Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, yeah, you could. Uh, uh, basically, the IAM giveaways, uh, they will only send to uh, New South Wales addresses. Okay, so all my different giveaways have different criteria. Uh, the IAM are for New South Wales residents only, uh, Ziegler and Brown for Australian residents only. Uh, I have a pair of shoes, but the sponsor haven't responded. It was meant to be international. But also I have um, Rode microphones, my next giveaway as well. I have uh, two left of those and Rode, my Rode microphone I'll also draw when I hit 2,000 followers. Okay, so I started with 10 Rode microphones. I started with 10 uh, Lenovo mini speakers. I'm down towards the end of it now. Two Ziegler and Brown barbecues. Yes, that's right. Yes, valued at Australian $749. It's not just the barbecue. I, I've... I've basically requested they supply the whole kit as well, you know, with the legs, the trolley and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, so, yeah, but if it was just the, the barbecue because they're meant to be portable, then it will be uh, valued less um, in before Remy wins again. <laughs> I know, right? Okay, guys, I think that's it, right? So, again, uh, if you're armed to the recipes, I haven't got this recipe on my website yet, but it will show up there at some point. <laughs> I'm a little bit behind my recipe writing. Uh, but my website is just jackiem.com.au, J-A-C-K-I-E-M.com.au. Um, and otherwise, um, yeah, nobody from New South Wales at the moment. <laughs> okay, New South my, my, my I am giveaways, like I said, are limited to New South Wales resident, residents. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I've got quite a few of those to give away yet. Anyway, thank you so much, guys. And I will see you. My next broadcast will be this Wednesday at 5 p.m. And I look forward to uh, Sydney time, by the way, guys. And I will see you then. Thanks so much again. Ciao. <laughs> okay, guys. Thanks for following, by the way. <laughs> Slotty Bob Ross. <laughs> thanks for following. Okay.